Hello everyone, welcome to Franklin Park Zoo's Zoo to You and today we are celebrating Cory Buster Day. My name is Nicole by the way, I'm a keeper in the Hooves and Horns department and I work with our Cory Busters. We have three of them, uh, so if we're starting all the way on the right hand side we've got Kabibi and then in the center here we have Onyx and then all the way to the left over here we have Magoo. And the way we can tell these guys apart is, well, Onyx is the tallest. It looks like Vivi's going to flap her wings there. Oh, she faked us out. <laughs> so, our male, and he stands the tallest, which is typical for an adult male Cory Buster. They can be up to two times the size of a female, so it's pretty impressive. Uh, he's not even at his full size yet, so he's three years old, and that's usually about when they start reaching uh, sexual maturity, so he's about getting to that age, but he hasn't started displaying any breeding behaviors quite yet. And then our two females, like I said, are a little bit smaller, and we actually are able to verify this through getting voluntary weights on these guys. They get on and off a scale voluntarily. So Onyx's last weight was 9.9 .9 kgs, which is kind of a, a little over 20 pounds. And the girls usually weigh between 6 and 8 kilograms, uh, which is about like 16 17 pounds which is typical for these species as well and as you can see they are very curious so they do a good job participating in their training sessions and when we are training with them they get some good snacks these guys typically in their natural habitat will eat small reptiles small mammals insects and then here at franklin park zoo we feed these guys some ground meat they get some bugs and they especially love the bugs for training so superworms, mealworms, crickets, earthworms and they tend to find a lot of bugs that hang out naturally in their habitat as well. I've seen them catch flies right out of the air so very impressive and then they also get some produce a couple times a week as well so cucumbers, grapes and that all is you know similar to what they'd be finding in their natural habitat. We try to make diets specially for them. Our commissary technicians are have a superpower. <laughs> uh, so these guys are naturally found in Africa. There's two small subpopulations. Uh, one is found in more of the eastern part of Africa and then there's a larger population in southern Africa. And these guys are considered near threatened. Uh, some of the biggest threats are, like most species, humans. So these guys have been prone to hitting power lines. They also are poached for their feathers. So here at Franklin Park Zoo, we actually collect their feathers. You can see a couple have naturally fallen off their bodies and their habitat. So we can actually collect them and we work with the Cory Bustard Feather Project, which collects feathers and distributes them to fishermen so they can build their lures and that way they don't have to poach quarry busters in their natural habitat. So we are happy to help in that way and in general Franklin Park Zoo does support a couple conservation programs in Africa that will naturally not just benefit say the giraffes but also the quarry busters who kind of live in the same area. These guys are typically found in grasslands, so they will be found kind of in the plains, uh, open spaces, and then maybe they'll nest in some tufts of grass. Look at that handsome male bird there. So you can see he's puffing out his feathers there. And that could be an excited behavior, or that could be a little bit of a breedy behavior. So males will actually, during breeding season, expand their necks just like he's doing now. And they'll make a low booming call, and that's to attract the females. And typically they're solitary until they, uh, you know, pair up during breeding season. And the male will actually breed multiple females. So he wants to be nice and big for breeding season. So they'll actually get even heavier uh, during that time as well. So they can better protect their area and patrol. 
species we're looking at? Martha was wondering. Oh yes, these guys are quarry busters. So there's a couple of different types of busters. They're most uh, closely related to the Arabian bustard, uh, but there's also an Australian bustard, and they vary in size, but they kind of all have that similar shape. And you guys are looking at Magoo right now, who's our oldest. I think she's 13 years old. Cory Busters can live into their 20s, like mid-20s in human care. We actually don't know how old they can live in their natural habitat. Uh, there's not a lot of studies that have been done on these guys, so we're really happy to be able to provide support to the species and also the species survival program. Uh, you may have heard about the species survival programs in some of our other zoo to use, but that's basically a coordinated effort between zoos and aquariums to match make birds and create appropriate social structures and also keep a genetically diverse population. So we do have these birds to breed, but we don't have a recommendation just yet, so we won't be having any chicks soon, but the girls do lay eggs. They lay uh, generally two eggs per clutch, so a clutch is just a group. Uh, so maybe they'll lay an egg one day, and then two days later they'll lay another one, uh, and then the, they'll sit on their eggs and they'll incubate for 23 days, I believe, and then the eggs will hatch. When the eggs hatch, the chicks are what you call precocial, which means they are up on their own. They can move around, follow their mother around, and the mother will help them feed. Uh, so pretty interesting birds there. I a question about are they trainable? They are trainable. They aren't the most trainable uh, animals that I work with, but they do participate in training. You can see they're very curious. They're seeing what we're doing. Uh, they tend to really enjoy bugs, so I use that as their reinforcer. So every time they do something good, they get that in return. So they're learning what a station is. And it, basically, we use Frisbees, and I line them up on the fence, and each bird has their own colored Frisbee that they stand in front of. And that way, I can divide my time equally between each bird. So if we had to medicate someone, it makes it a little bit easier to separate them. They also get on and off a scale voluntarily uh, inside. And then we're working on some tactile behaviors with them now as well. So they do very well. They just take a long time to build confidence, and it requires a good amount of trust. Uh, so repetition is key, just like with your cat or your dog training. Uh, you want to get as many reps in there as possible so they're nice and comfortable and they know exactly what they're doing. But most of our animals here at Franklin Park Zoo uh, do participate in training. So, we have other oh, questions? Have other question, but can they fly away? Can they fly away? That's a great question. So quarry busters naturally, as I was saying, they're the heaviest flighted bird. So it takes a lot of energy to get up into the sky. <laughs> so their typical defense is going to be to run, but they are able to fly. Uh, it's not necessarily the most graceful thing uh, to witness when they're first taking off, uh, but it is very impressive. They really will only fly off if they're startled. Uh, sometimes they'll do very small migrations, so they'll fly maybe to find food if they're not having luck in their current location or if they're looking for water. Uh, so they will occasionally fly, but um, it's not super common. They also don't perch. A lot of times you think of birds as standing on branches and things, but if you look at their toes, they have no back toes, so they aren't able to wrap their toes around a branch and stand on it. So they're terrestrial and they hang out on the ground. They'll walk around looking for bugs and things. Uh, they do have a relationship with a, another type of bird called a bee eater. And oftentimes in Africa, you'll see a quarry bustard with a little bee eater on their back. And as the quarry bustard walks around, it displaces a lot of insects and bugs, and the bee eater is able to eat those bugs that the quarry bustard displaces. And then maybe it's beneficial to have a bee eater on your back so that you have an extra set of eyes looking out for predators. So if the bee eater flies off, the quarry bustard knows there's probably a predator nearby. Some predators of the quarry bustard are hyenas, jackals, even some larger birds like eagles, uh, and then of course the infamous lion. 
Uh, so they definitely have to watch out for predators. Oftentimes here at the zoo you do catch them looking around, surveying uh, their habitat or checking you out and they also tend to look up to the sky a lot. So they're always on the lookout. But they, I think Kabibi was just glancing up at the sky over there, looking out some, for some hawks maybe. But they are enjoying this nice warm weather. So typically you guys will see them out on their habitat when it's above 35 degrees and then it's not too windy because we don't want them to blow away. Uh, but today is a beautiful day for them to be out and about. I'm also going to be giving them a little bit of enrichment shortly on their habitat. So they, to kind of stimulate how they'd naturally be looking for food, I like to throw maybe some of their food items out on their habitat. So they have to kind of look around for uh, items. And today on the menu, I'll be tossing them some grapes. So I'm sure they'll be very excited about that. No more questions? All right, well, maybe we'll wrap up for today. I'm really glad you guys got to hang out with our Cory Busters. Uh, the actual Cory Buster Day is Sunday, so we're just celebrating really early. But stay tuned on our social media and keep up with the celebrations. Uh, and I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thank you.